All right, hopefully you can see my slide. Um, I'm gonna go right into it. I went the full 15 minutes when I rehearsed, so I won't have time to answer questions, but I'll be in the networking event, uh, the networking room afterwards. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, great, you can see it. All right, so let's go. I'm gonna be talking about presenting predictive modeling results in the real world. My name is Renee Teed. I'm the director of data science at Helio campus. And you can see my Twitter handle down in the corner, becoming data sci. That's a good way to contact me if you have questions. So what do I mean when I say the real world? I'm not talking about class projects that students are used to, scientific conference talks that researchers and academics are used to, no live coding demos that developers are used to. I'm talking about presenting to an industry group of non-technical or non-data scientist stakeholders in the business world. Um, and some of the tips here are also relevant for presenting at something like a data science meetup or at an interview, but I'm really focused on presenting at work. So some common problems that I've had or that I've heard others have when presenting data science results are maybe you just answered the totally wrong question and so you've totally lost the audience. It wasn't what they were expecting. Um, maybe you're being overly technical and presenting to non-data scientists and you haven't put that in the business context and made your results actionable so they know what they can do with what you're presenting. Maybe you've had a lack of buy-in. So the results you're presenting are just totally misunderstood or rejected. People just say that's not what we expected or that's not what we wanna do. Um, they don't believe your results. And then sometimes you'll get lots of smiling and nodding, but no real engagement or follow through afterwards. So you probably delivered what they wanted, but they don't know what to do next. So here's another data science Venn diagram. Um, and these came from when I talked to the people I was interviewing for my podcast, these three things came up uh, consistently as things that people look for in a good data scientist when they're hiring them. It also ties in with presenting. Um, so with any Venn diagram, we have to say where's the intersections here. So um, without the research and explanation of, uh, sorry, without the creative problem solving, you've probably done great research, you dove in, you're curious, um, you can communicate, you tell a great story, but you're not giving them any actionable solutions. You're not solving the problem that they've asked you to solve with analytics. Um, without good communications, uh, you have done a great uh, analysis, you've dug in and found all this extra value added, but if you can't get that across to your stakeholders, um, you know, that won't go well in the presentation. And then um, if you are a creative problem solver and you can communicate, you probably answer the questions they had and do a good job, but you're not expressing that value add that comes from being curious and going beyond what you were asked to do and presenting some insights that surprise them. Um, so to tie these two together, if you're answering the wrong question, that was probably an early communication problem. If you're being overly technical, that could be a communication issue or it could be a curiosity issue. If you're not interested in the business context and how to add value from a business perspective, um, you're gonna focus on the technical side and not on what this means to your stakeholders. Um, if you're not presenting it in context or making the results actionable, maybe you didn't even solve the problem that they presented. And if you're not getting buy-in, that could have been a communication problem. Maybe you didn't solve their problem. If you're getting a lot of smiles and nods, you were probably, um, you know, solved their problem and communicated just fine, but you're not adding that curiosity and value add that people look for when they're really gonna be impressed by somebody presenting results. So the main point here is that laying the foundation for a successful presentation of results starts before you even begin the project. So you might have expected me to be talking a lot about you know, how to present a visualization or something like that, but I'm actually gonna talk about how to set yourself up for success early on. So step one, determine the actual requirements. So it might not be what you were actually asked to do. You might have to dig in a little more and find out what problem are they trying to answer? Um, what's their domain question? Uh, what decisions and actions might they take as a result of what you deliver? So that will help you understand what type of analysis to do, wh what the deliverable should look like, um, and you could really tie it in with what they're really trying to solve instead of just doing a technical task. So an example in my career has been, you know, an institution might ask, we want a model that predicts freshman retention. I work in higher ed. Um, so do they want to know how many students will retain for long a year or something? Do they wanna know which individual students are at risk of dropping out? 
what does retention even mean to them? Um, over what time period are they measuring retention when they say they retain or not? Is this a one-time deliverable or a product that needs to be deployed and be able to run repeatedly? The work you do is gonna be different based on the answers to those. So you can kind of pare down by talking to them, their business questions. So they're really asking which of our currently enrolled freshmen are at risk of not retaining? How might we intervene this semester to improve their chances of continuing at our institution? And then when you further refine the definitions and get into the analytical version of that question, what you're finding out is it really be, might be which first time, full time degree seeking freshmen that are enrolled this fall are most likely to be continuously enrolled through next fall and what factors appear to be correlated with the outcome so we could possibly plan some interventions there. And so this is taking you through what I've shown in every presentation I've ever given this uh, I'm keeping my track record going. You have to be able to listen to a business question convert it into a data question do the analysis to get your data answer and then convert it back into a business answer. So this is that context around your analysis. So here we're doing the first steps. We're taking the business question, converting it to a data question. The second step, you have to set some realistic expectations. So after you determine what they want, this is your first, first chance to get buy-in for your eventual results and presentation. So you wanna have a project plan. What question are you answering? What are those definitions that you've gotten from talking to the stakeholders? Um, what might the deliverable look like? Tell them ahead of time. The plan delivery date, this is notoriously hard to estimate. And so if you can actually put this off until you've had a chance to look at the data, see what kind of shape it's in, how much work it's gonna to take to even get a data set to start exploring, um, that might give you a better estimate. And then um, what are your project requirements? What do you need from other people? What kind of access do you need to the data? Um, if you ask a question and they don't get back to you for two weeks, uh, how will that affect the deliverable? So. What might change as you go through this? Kind of give them an idea of what this project's gonna look like. Then you actually do the analysis, which is beyond the scope of this talk today. You can do whatever approach makes sense. And make sure you're solving the problem and answering that question that they're asking. And then don't forget to be curious. So if you see something surprising, dig into it, anticipate what their follow-up questions might be, which you can do if you have that domain knowledge or if you're checking in with stakeholders throughout the project. Um, answer them now. If it won't derail your whole project while you're in there, get these additional little nuggets of information that you can deliver. And that was step three, do the analysis, but 3B being done in parallel, um, you wanna develop allies and bring these stakeholders along with you. So you're not gonna just disappear until the delivery date. Uh, make sure you're checking in regularly, keeping people engaged. You can deliver insights throughout. You don't have to wait till the end to surprise them with everything in the final presentation. Ask them questions while you've got them available. In my work, if I can get you know, an enrollment manager or somebody who enters the data available to ask questions about what the different categories mean or ideas they have, that's really valuable to me. And I can sanity check those metrics and see if any of the results I have so far are surprising. And I'm developing those allies because when I get to the final presentation, if I've been working with one or two people all along and checking in, and then I have a final presentation to a larger group and those people are there, they can be my allies and help explain and contextualize things during the presentation. Um, select key highlights of your data answer. So when you do the analysis, make sure you're keeping track of what those key highlights are. You're gonna have to convert it into a business answer, but you also wanna have the metrics to back up why you made the analysis choices you did, how good your model is, why you came to the conclusion you did. So you can use data visualizations to kind of walk them through that analysis, key findings, um, and pick some bonus content. So if you've got time in the presentation, you could throw in those additional value adds and figure out how to explain your evaluation metrics in context. So if you chose to optimize for recall in a classification problem instead of for accuracy, why did you do that? And what does it mean? Maybe the model looks less accurate, but you've got better results for the actual intended use of the model. And so you can explain that. So now you convert all those data answers into business answers. So you're gonna tell them a story of what you just did and have some visuals to help along the way. Explain how confident you are and why with those evaluation metrics. Also, what would you do if you had more time or more resources or more data? Um, you're continually putting all of these data answers into the business context. 
they're not wondering what is the sum of squared error of this model. <laughs> they're wondering, what does this mean to me? How can I put this information into use to improve our outcomes? And you can clarify what your results mean and don't mean. If you hear them misinterpreting it during the, the presentation, you can address that there. And again, you're not telling them what to do as a result of this model. You're giving them all the information they need to make their business decisions and take actions. Um, and then deliver tools and documentation. So after the presentation, they can take it and further explore and put those results into action. So here's one exa example presentation visualization I've used. Um, this is not real data, but let's present, pretend it's the percent of students that graduated in four years grouped by the student's first term GPA. So you can say, look, after the first term, the students that had under a 1.5 GPA, only you know one to 2% of them made it to graduation in four years. And you can see there's a relationship here that as the GPA goes up, um, the color and the label, those numbers are going up. That's the actual graduation rate. And the length of the bar is the number of students that are in each group. So this might, this helps explain what you're looking for. I'm looking for a relationship between input variables like GPA and output variables like for your graduation. So I can determine if this is a good field to include in my model. I'm also looking over time. I have data from fall 2013, fall 2014, and fall 2015 cohorts. So these are freshmen in different years. Did the pattern hold up? Is this a good signal? Or is this a, a variable where the, it's changing over time? It might not be a good thing to include in the model. Do the trends look similar over time? So when I go back to fall 2013, if this were empty, I would say, well, we don't have that data for the fall 2013 students. So um, maybe we shouldn't use that cohort in the training. And so I'm explaining here the relationships between data, the concepts of training and testing and what's going into my model. And if I do this throughout the project, by the time I get to the model results, they understand what went into it and why. And so it's not surprising to them. You're getting that buy-in as you go. Here's another example. Again, same format, simple bar chart. The length of the bar is how many students are in that group. And the, the label and the color here is what percentage of these students actually graduated in four years. Now they're grouped by the model predictions. So this is for the um, testing group the model group them, I just made up labels for these different ranges of model scores, right? And so they don't care if it's a 0.28, they care is it a low or a high likelihood to graduate in four years. So I could show, demonstrate here, look, our model's working. As the prediction uh, label gets higher, the actual graduation rate gets higher. So maybe there's ways I can improve my model. There's more data I can go back and include. I can improve the uh, evaluation metrics, but I'm at least able to demonstrate um, the model's showing us something helpful. Maybe these students at the lowest end, they've already dropped out or they're just very unlikely to graduate. The students at highest end, you don't need to do a lot of information. They're on track, uh, interventions, they're on track. But maybe in these middle groups, that's where you can find out why did a student end up in this particular bin? Uh, what is correlated with the student getting a medium high score instead of a high score? Um, what are the different variables involved? So you can further dig but you've set the framework that my model is telling us something useful. How do you know your presentation went well? Your stakeholders will tell you it went well. They understand your results and how to use them. They ask good questions, even if they're pushing back or asking for more clarification. If they can ask a good question, that means they understood what you presented. That's a good sign. Um, they might have some ideas for follow-up actions. They wanna show it off to others. They ask, can you show this to our provost? or they want more models. Oh, can you do the same kind of thing for admissions yield instead of just retention? So the overall concept here is that like dark on Netflix, the end is the beginning is the end. So laying a successful foundation at the very beginning, um, starting with a good origin results in good presentation. So it's not just about what your final PowerPoint looks like, but what you did all along the way to get to that final presentation. Um, so I'm out of time here, but there's my Twitter handle, Becoming Data Sci, if you want to tweet me, and I'll also join the networking session that immediately follows. So thank you.